Hi, everyone. Just need yeah. Does it matter? I can just talk like this, right? Yeah. Everyone's just fine. You can hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I'm David Cadaby, and my uh, presentation today is called Design for the Coder's Mind, Reverse Engineering uh, Visual Dot Design. And today, I, I don't really want to give you like a list of do's and don'ts, but rather teach you a little bit about some of the principles behind the decisions that designers make when they design websites um, or other things as well. So first of all, why, why learn about design? How many of you here are back-end coders? And how many of you are front-end people? OK, this might be, review, who's both? OK, there's a lot of you. So hopefully this won't be too much review. Um, you know, if, if you are a back-end coder, I think it's, it's good to know how to know design because you, you're always going to be like working on your own application and you want to do a little bit of design, you have access to a designer. And if you want something done right, then you've got to do it yourself sometimes, don't you, right? Um, so that's one reason. And also, if you are a back-end engineer who works with front-end engineers, you might start to understand why they might get a little bent out of shape when something's two pixels off. Yours. Um, so a little bit about me first. If you know, if you're going to believe what I say today, uh, you might want to know who I am. Uh, my background is in visual design to start off with. I worked at an architecture firm for about three years. I did some architectural installations. I did some print work. I did some interactive work. I had my work published in Communication Arts magazine. And I also taught a class. And some of those lesson plans were published in a book called Type Rules. And then I recently spent the last three years in Silicon Valley working for startups as a front-end guy and working with some back-end people. So what does the designers do? Um, aside from creating like a look and feel so that, so that uh, a site or application uh, evokes a certain type of emotion or a certain message, designers put things in boxes is the way I like to think about it. When we encounter information that's, that's like ambiguous, we want to put it in boxes. We want to make sense of it. That's why we have things like, oh, we're, we're liberal, or we're, we're conservative, or we're type A, or we're type B. These things that are, are very nebulous, we, we want to make some sense of it. And so if you have an application, generally there's going to be a lot of information that has to be presented. And you want your viewer, when they, when they arrive at your application or your website, to instantly like, see everything is in its place and, and get a sense of what is it the, the first thing that I should be looking at right here? What's the second thing I should be looking at? So creating hierarchies is a big part of what designers do. So we put things in boxes. This is the big box. This is the first thing you're supposed to look at. The smaller box, the second thing you're supposed to look at, et cetera. It's kind of simplifying things, but that is going to be sort of a premise behind this presentation. Um, and one of the sneaky ways that we put things in boxes in an, an invisible way is through proportion. If you take the iPod, the best-selling music player of all time, and it's beautiful, but it's a very simple design because everything is in its place. You can see here the click wheel. The iPod doesn't normally have pink stuff on it, obviously. But the click wheel is three times the size of this little button that's in the, in the center. And that little button in the center is used to make the bevels of the iPod. And the screen of the iPod is the size of that, is the width of that click wheel plus one of those little, bu little buttons. Do you have a question? Do you think they use the perfect ratio? I mean, the golden ratio? The golden ratio, well, the golden ratio is one means of proportion that designers use sometimes. Uh, I like to use 0.75, which I'll get, I'll get back to uh, later on in the presentation, which is just essentially a 3 to 4 ratio, uh, which is like what a television is at, except for now we have televisions that are 69. Um, but proportion is, is one way that a designer can sort of invisibly put things in their place so that when you look at it, you're like, oh, God, that is really attractive. And you don't know why, but it's because everything is... Your, your eyes looking at it and everything is, is in its place. It all belongs where it is. Uh, but going on to websites, this will be my only real world example. 
Gaper's block. You might have heard of grid systems. Um, a lot of websites. Pardon? Why you why? Right, yeah, why? Oh, the uh, user yeah. interface library? For yeah, yeah, for Yahoo. Yeah. yeah. A lot of websites out there are on like four column or three column grid systems. Um, Gaper's block happens to be on a five column grid system. And grid systems kind of allow designers to create areas of information and, and make some of them look more important than the others. So for example, we have this column over here on the left and it's, it uses up two of the columns of the grid system. And we have this one in the center which is you know, a little bit less important information you can sort of tell. Um, but then also, uh, managing the space between elements is, is important. Uh, to, to, you know, it's important to use proportion in managing the space around elements. So for example, right here where it says merge, you have this heading and uh, you can see that the distance that it is from the edge of the column is the same as the distance as it is from the rules above and below it. So it's sort of like in its box, it's in its place, but you don't have to put a box around it, which would sort of defeat the purpose and it would make it look like crap. And another way proportions used is in size. I was talking about how I like to use 0.75 as, as uh, something to help me calculate uh, scale changes or, or create um, proportions. Um, it used to be that if, when type was set in lead, if you wanted something to be important or big, you would make it 72 points or you would make it 60 points because it was, it was set in lead. You didn't have a whole lot of different type sizes. Today you can make it 72 points, you can make it 60 points, you can make it 61 points, you can make it 61.001 points. You can come up with some pretty sloppy layouts that way if you don't manage your size changes. So I just use this scale of, of type. I start with you know, 7, 9, 12, 16, 21, 28, 37, 50, 67, 89, 118. I, I came up with that by taking 7, which is the smallest type size that I'm really likely to ever use, and dividing it by 0.75 over and over again and doing some rounding. So things get a little bit hairy on screen down this lower end where you might have to bump things up a pixel or down a pixel to create the right effect. But generally when you, when you pick a size, you should kind of go with it. Um, maybe use a couple different other sizes and um, try to use other means for, for creating hierarchy in your information like bolding something or changing colors, <coughs> things like that. So if you go to like my Facebook profile, um, Facebook does a great job of managing the size of their type. This stuff here is like, this stuff here is nine point pixels. Stuff here is like uh, 11 pixels. Got some 13 pixel stuff here. This stuff's about 16 pixels. They, they do a really good job of managing the size and they also do a good job of managing the space between elements. Um, so you can see the space around, say where it says info on this tab, the space around it is very proportional, it's managed well. And then on, on this uh, menu right here, it's also, uh, it's, it's equal. The, the, the distance above and below it, the space that is there is equal. So things are sort of in their place and it results in a very clean design. And what would design be with, without color? Uh, color is probably the most subjective part of design and people I think are often mistaken to believe that choosing colors requires some sort of innate talent or something and it, it doesn't. Um, you might recognize this color wheel from the last uh, art class you took or, but just to review it's just a progression of colors in a wheel and it helps designers choose colors uh, for when they're designing things. So if you took 